Hey, John, I'm Zach. Zach, John Massanoble, Jumbo Max Golf Grips. It's really good to, to meet you, John. I've been hearing a lot about these grips. I've had so many club fittings in my life, but never a grip fitting. So tell me what we're gonna do here and what we're hoping to find out. Well, this is really unique, Zach. Um, we've always fit for drivers and shafts, and then you get to the end of your fitting, and the fitter always asks you, well, what grip do you want? Um, and the first thing they ask you when they give you a grip is how does it feel? Sure. So we thought, boy, why isn't there any science put into the grip? Why uh, has the grip always been the same size all these years? Golf was invented 500 years ago, and I think somebody wrapped leather around a hickory stick, and we decided that that was the optimum size. And that's what we all use. And that's what we all use. And we've adapted well to it. I mean, some of the best golf in the world has always been played with skinny handles. But if you really start examining the sport and examining other sports, you notice that handles are bigger in every other sport that you play. Sure. Um, not to mention if you go into your uh, closet or into your garage and start looking at the handles on your tools. Sure. They're also bigger. So we said, why not uh, the golf grip? So we built the golf grip up, and some of the things that we found out are really amazing, and we think it's going to change the game. Um, so what I'd like to do is take you through a fitting. Um, the way that we're going to do the fitting, Zach, is we're going to start with a standard size grip, and we're going to get some baseline yeah, numbers. Yeah, this feels pretty much like what I play. Okay, yeah, it is. It's just a standard grip. Jumbo Max also makes standard grips, so uh, folks don't uh, maybe know that. But we start with standard, and we go all the way up to what Bryson DeChambeau does in the extra-large Jumbo Max. So we're going to try some variations today, and we're going to look for uh, optimum speeds. Uh, we're going to look for optimum spin rates. We're going to look for face. We're going to look for path. And we're going to discover what grip fits you the best and what you deliver the club to the ball with optimum efficiency. Okay. Um, so should we you know, get going? Yeah, let's get this going. Check okay. it out. So, so anything I need to know, just straight uh, away just, here? Yeah, let's just get you warmed up and uh, make a few good swings and let me know when you feel like you've hit two or three good ones and then we're gonna move to the next grip. Okay, yeah, I feel pretty loose, so great. let's see how this goes. It goes pretty well from the yeah, looks of that. I Zach. told you I was feeling loose. Man. Okay. Right out of the blocks. That's going to be hard to beat. So let's check out some of the numbers. I mean, you can see your path and your face uh, path is really good. I mean, 1.5 and 0.1 is excellent. Your ball speed's at 180, uh, 122 club head speed, and your uh, optimum backspin at 26.94. So right out of the blocks, I can tell you're an excellent golfer. Yeah, well, this is this is the best club in the bag for sure, driver. Okay, well, good. Well, that's a good start. Hit a couple more, and let's make sure that those are your optimum numbers. Okay. A little different shape on that one. Yeah, a little slight fade, but it's still on the grid and um, in the fairway. And we're at the uh, 178 ball speed, 120, 125 on the club head speed, and 2700 for spin. We're going to try something a little bit bigger and a little bit lighter. So standard grips weigh about 60, 65 grams. Jumbo Max has been able to develop what we call the ultralight grip. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're able to go larger than a standard grip, but we're also able to keep the weight, overall weight of the grip uh, down. Okay. Where that's going to benefit you, Zach, is going to help you create a little more lag. And that could be good or bad just depending on your delivery to the ball. So. And it's going to keep the swing weight about the same. And it's going to maintain the integrity of the swing weight, yeah. exactly. So a lot of folks worry, hey, I want to stay in that D2 range. Where you're able to do that with the Jumbo Max Extra Large Ultralight. Very cool. So uh, we're not going to go quite that big yet, but okay. we'll get there. All right, let's do it. Okay. So, Zach. You and I had talked earlier about uh, the grip fitting tool at jumbomax.com. Sure. There's about five basic questions, and based on some of your answers, which was your glove size, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about your ball path, um, we talked about whether or not you have any achy fingers or joints in your hand. All those will determine what size grip we fit you in originally. Based on what we talked about, I fit you into a medium grip. So we're going to see whether you're somewhere in that medium range or we might even go a little bit bigger based on numbers. Sure. We've gone a little bit bigger, Zach. 
and we've gone a little bit lighter in the grip. That grip is uh, about 40 grams. Yeah, it's, it's bigger. And you can notice that it's a little bit bigger in your hands, so. Okay. That's it okay. Mm-hmm. Let's see. It's funny, you, you went bigger and I hit it more to the left. Well, a lot of that has to do with grip pressure. Um, what we found out is a lot of people squeeze the grip too hard, create a lot of tension in your forearms, and sure. that kind of inhibits your release. That was one of the things I said on the grip fitting tools. I, I squeeze it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, another reason to go a little bit bigger. It was that one there I got. That looked like it was ripped pretty good. Yeah, it's flying. Very nice. Oh, the old zero face angle. Love a zero face angle. So that's optimum. Uh, Ooh, 120. 126, so that's your fastest speed. And you got the 180 that time on ball speed. Wow. So you really max that out. So let's, let's take a look at that. What we've done here is we've given you a very interesting grip. It's an extra small and it's a straight taper. Mm -hmm. So we built up the bottom hand oh, on so the we're straight not even tapers. To, we're not even to medium yet. We're not even to medium yet. Um, what I'm liking about this is you really freed up your release. The ball's turning over. Your first balls were nice and straight and maybe we had one hang to the right. All of these balls have turned over and been center to left center. Without trying. Without even yeah, doing. I just looked up know. and it was going left, yeah. which is not super typical for me. Yeah, the only variable is the, is the grip because we're going to give you all the same shafts and the same heads. So the only variable is going to be the grip. So what you see here is all grip performance based. Um, so right now we've maxed out at 126 club head speed. Uh, we're at 180 ball speed and we're at 26. 50 spin rates. A lot of good numbers there, Zach. So what else do you have for me? So we're going to go a little bit bigger and we're going to add a little weight to the grip. Okay. And we're going to see... Uh, we're going to do both things at once? What that looks like. Heavier and bigger? We're going to go heavier and bigger. Okay. Yep. You know, one of the reasons you said that Gemmo Max grips is different than all the other grips is that you're able to get bigger grips without the weight, but now you're talking about adding weight what, what kind of golfers typically want more weight in their handle? Golfers that um, tend to push the ball or tend to have a lot of lag in their golf swing. I think I'm in that bucket. Yeah, will benefit from yeah. more weight in the handle. And what that does, in essence, is it just moves the balance point up the shaft a little bit. So the more weight we have in the handle, the more balanced the club is going to be. Okay. Right? If there's no weight in the handle, it's almost like a sledgehammer. You take it back and the head wants to stay back, sure. which will create lag. So by adding weight into the handle, you're getting the club head and the handle to move more together, almost like a fishing pole motion. Okay. So you'll get to the point of release, and with having weight in your hand, you're able to stop that handle and potentially get a little more snap into the ball. So we're going to see um, what kind of speeds you get. And we're also going to see what kind of start lines you get. Okay. Because start lines are important. But and no, we, but no pressure, right? No pressure at all. You just grip it and rip it. Let's see. We'll do the rest. Yeah, this is bigger. No yeah. question. Yeah, I put you in a medium. So the difference between the weight of the grip is about 65 grams. Mm -hmm. And this grip is going to have a bigger top hand. It's the medium Jumbo Max Tour Series. Okay. Wow. I mean, it just feels different in the backswing. Wow, that was different. That's nice. Look That's at how high that is. Painting the line, it's higher. Let's see what your spin rates look like. I got that, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good. Yeah. Great numbers, path, face. 124 club head speed, 178, and the spin is at 27.36. That launch is up almost two degrees. The launch is up two degrees. Beautiful shot. Let's see yeah. if we can uh, improve on that. And it's, it's kind of hard to describe, but I mean, this doesn't even feel like the same club anymore. Right. A little bit lighter feeling in the head. 
I'm honestly surprised the numbers are as similar as they are. Is that one I, because it's so big and so heavy, I feel like I can really rip at it. Right. And that's gonna be the longest, well, barely, longest one of the day. Yeah, long and straight. One thing that we noticed, that's 125, you got your 180 ball speed, so you matched your, you matched your top number uh, for ball speed. With less club head speed. With less club head speed, so it was well hit. It's higher. Because hey, you, you get down to the bottom with the, with the weight and it feels like you can go this way more. Right. You know, swing more up, swing more left, all that stuff they're trying to do on tour. Mm hmm Another one on the line. Oh, man, John. Yeah, that one, uh, that Ooh. one was optimized. Wow. Might need to give me less loft in this. That's head. impressive. Yeah, you might be able to go down and loft. A little healy, maybe, if we're splitting hairs. Well, you're at 182 ball speed and uh, 129 club head speed. I, that's my fastest club head speed ever. 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 Is that right? Well, it's interesting because we always find speed, Zach. That's probably one of the staples of the grip fitting is we always come away with better club head speed and we usually optimize the, uh, the spin as well. The cool thing about what we can do now is we can start tweaking ball flight because what you notice with the lighter stuff is you were drawing it a little bit more, mm -hmm. okay? Whereas this one, you seem to have a little bit more stability and your, your balls are going, it's very straight, yeah. slight, I mean, maybe The only a reason that draw. ball's not going further is because it's higher. Right. Yeah, and that's, right. I mean, that's what we all want with our drivers. We want to hit it as high as we possibly can. Exactly. And you're hitting, you're hitting your windows. So um, hit another one. Let's see if we can get up to 130. No pressure. Speed. No pressure. I'll try to swing a little harder. All right. Then. What I like about this is you're really going after it, but you haven't lost any dispersion. You're hitting the line time and time again. That feels pretty easy because right at the bottom, you know, the, the club will release and the big sort of block right is the one that I struggle with. Right. So that, it's a lot of fun, honestly. Yeah. But I don't... You're back at that 129, 186 ball speed. I mean, you're getting close to 190. But the thing, yeah, I've been in the golf world for a long time, John. I played a little bit in college and then I worked a little bit in golf media. And the thing that I've seen is all of the innovations now that are on tour, they started with long drive. Right. So guys getting in the gym and getting strong, that was long drive. Guys trying to hit up on it and launch it with low spin, that was long drive. So, you know, I, I, got, I mean, I've been around the industry long enough to know that if something comes in the long drive, you should probably pay attention. And, and Jumbo Max is kind of dominating long drive right now. Yeah, I've been fortunate to be able to work with these guys, um, Martin Borgmeier and Justin James and some of the fastest guys in the world, um, not to mention Bryson DeChambeau. So what's interesting about working with these guys is you're maxing out. I mean, when you get to work with these guys. Um, yeah, this is like what? This is their four iron maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Bryson and uh, yeah, he hits a seven iron about 240. So. Um, but the, the neat thing is we always find speed. So whether it's, you know, the fastest guys in the world or the folks that really need it. I mean, just the average Joe, uh, we're able to find anywhere from three to six miles an hour routinely. Sure. So there's a lot of technology in the grips and we can talk a little bit further about what's actually happening. Um, you know, when you're delivering the club, we're really slowing the closure rate of the face down, which is giving you the ability to free release. Yeah, because to hit that draw, typically, I've got to feel like I do something. you got to hold on a little bit. Yeah, well, just, just sort of like get it going left, you know. Right. And, and with this grip, um, I mean, I'm just swinging and it's drawing, which is not typically what happens for me. I mean, I hit a little tight draw in the beginning, but that, that one that fell right of the target was really more typical. Right, right. Well, having a little extra weight in the handle is going to allow you to get the club face out in front a little bit better. Um, so right now you're maxing out with a medium uh, 105 gram grip. So a typical grip again weighs about 60, 65 grams. So we've added about 40 grams into the Tour Series medium. 
Um, so counterweight balancing is a big deal. People don't talk a lot about it. We can get into that a little bit later, but um, you know, it seems to really be working for you. You've hit every ball in the fairway so far with this grip, yeah. but I still think there's a little more speed somewhere. So we're gonna keep looking. Yeah. So Zach, we picked up, um, what, three, four miles an hour from when you started out with the uh, standard grip. Yeah, I mean, if I'm at, and this is on different monitors, but if I'm at 180, 181, I'm cruising. So those are, those are not numbers I typically see for ball speed or club head speed. Yeah, great. So we've maximized so far your numbers with the Jumbo Max Medium Tour Series. It's a 105 gram grip. What I'm about to give you is the grip that Bryson DeChambeau uses. He's won a lot of golf tournaments with this grip. It's 123 grams extra large. So hey. here, here it is. Wrap your hands around that baby and let's see what you can do. It almost feels like it's as heavy as the club head. It definitely balances, uh, balances the club out for sure. But it's, you know, I mean, we'll see how I hit it here, but right here, because all the weight in the handle, it just goes like that. Yep. Which is really nice for somebody who struggles with the right miss. Exactly. <laughs> wow. And that was just cruising. I didn't really want to go full bore until I, I knew what it sure, felt like. Sure, but that's again in the fairway and it's exceptionally long, yeah. I got it real solid. So you're 3.3. So it did affect your path and face number a little bit. Um, we're 180. Who came down a little bit. Came down a little bit. Well, we're at that, that 124, really... nothing drastic. Yeah, I mean, those last couple I was really going after, mm -hmm. but that would be, you know, if I'm on the golf course, that's like a normal swing. Right. Let me get used to it one more time before I really go at it. Okay. Not the best strike, but that that's, is right on the line. Yep. Great dispersion. A little bit higher launch, it looked like. Maybe. Yeah, like high heel. Mm hmm. So the path is 3.2 inside out. 128, 182. Okay, so it looks like we may have gotten a little diminished return on the bigger grip, but let's see if you got any more speed in there. A couple more. You're saying it might be just a fraction too big? We want to get those hands moving um, as fast as we can through impact. So um, size will dictate some of that. I mean, that is just nuke, John. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Let's see. Good there. Yeah. Maybe a little out of the heel. We'll see. 127, 180. Okay, let's see if we can get that speed back. You know, that online grip fitting tool might have been right. Yeah, we kind of got it landed right in that sweet spot, didn't we? Yeah. How did you come up with that, John? I mean, uh, five questions to get what's taking us, you know, 30 minutes here in the Bay? Well, it's just a lot of years of experience doing the fittings and um, kind of common sense approach. We know that we can slow down the closure rate of the face based on the size of the grip. We know we can affect the delivery um, from the weight of the grip, whether you get the club out in front or not. So let me, let me make sure, because I, I didn't understand this until you really just said it right there. Because the, people always say, uh, you put a bigger grip in my hands, I can't rotate it as fast, it's gonna go out to the right. But what you're saying is, because it's bigger, I actually don't rotate it as much on the way back, Correct. so I don't have to rotate it as much on the way through. Correct, there's less face manipulation. Yeah, so it's more of a simple swing, if you will. It's a, it's a big muscle swing. Yeah. So think of it in terms of a race car. Um, you got a small go-kart, you turn the small wheel, the car acts quickly, right. dramatically. A skinny handle is gonna affect the club face the same way as a, a small wheel in a race car. So you're gonna have quicker, more dramatic movements the skinnier the handle. If we put a larger diameter handle on there, it's gonna be a slower, more deliberate turn, but it's also gonna open and close less. Yeah. So in essence, the club face is gonna stay square longer to the target with less club face manipulation. Sure. 
And, and I, I think that's why I feel like I can go at it because the club face is pretty square. Correct. You know, compared to me needing to. You're do not something. having to find it. Yeah. You know, how many times do you get to the back of your swing? You're like, oh, where, I got to. Where, where is the club? Where is it? Where's the face? This gives you face recognition. And, uh, you know, we'll get into a little more science of where the grip fits in your hand because there's a lot to be said for where the grip fits. If you don't have any surface contact and it's fingers based, you have a lot more wrist hinge and a lot sure. more roll yeah. um, and more manipulation. So by getting the grip into more of the palm, it's still finger based, yeah. but now it's up into this pad of your palm, which connects to your owner. Yeah. So now you're not losing any kinetic energy during the transfer of the swing. Whereas if it's sitting in your fingers, you're finding it and you're manipulating it sure. through impact. We're eliminating a lot of that manipulation. Sure. So. so Zach, here's the ultimate test. We took the 123 gram extra large, our biggest grip, and we added 100 grams. Okay. This is gonna feel like a fishing pole. Sure. Okay, but it's important to do this to maximize the test. For us to get you into the best fit for you, we're gonna go from one extreme to another. We're gonna go with the lightest, skinniest grip, and now you have the biggest, heaviest grip. So let's see what this does to your ball flight. And just to be clear, I mean, there's nothing like this on the market. There's nothing like this on the market. Yeah, so this is for the people that say, you know, adding 60 grams and changing my swing weight is gonna screw me all up. Like. We're gonna see how much it's gonna screw you up. This is for the swing weight crowd. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're swinging in the B's right now. Oh, so. okay. Standard would be a D2, just for a reference point. It feels crazy. Yeah. Let's see how it flies. <laughs> you gotta be kidding flies, me. It uh, flies pretty straight and steady. That might be one of your better <laughs> balls. I mean, just holding this right here, John, and the grip is coming down because it's yeah. so happy. Yeah, the biggest issue you're going to have is if you have a caddy, they got to carry the bag. Right, it's like having a long putter in the bag. Uh-huh. I mean, I healed that a little bit, but... Well, your, your speed is still up I mean, the, the from club, a standard grip. The club grip. is twice as heavy now, but the club speed is basically the same. Yep, and you hit it right on the line, so... Wow. You're not going to hit it much straighter. A couple more, just so we have a steady... Steady path here. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I swung hard at a couple of previous ones, so yeah. we'll try one more time. Let's see what you got. And you're saying really let this one release. Yeah. Really let the weight do the work. Yep. <laughs> Boy, I mean, you are just painting the line, my friend. I think that's going to be the longest one. Is that right? Unreal. All right, numbers. Let's what see. Do you got to say? What's the revealer going to tell us? I mean, us if people here? at home could feel this grip, they wouldn't believe it. Right. Yeah, it's still not quite as, as not, fast as you the You haven't ma you have maxed it, but those are really solid numbers, and it totally blows up the swing weight theory. Yeah. So we've got <laughs> a grip that's what four times as heavy as a standard grip. Is yeah. that right? And we've got the biggest grip you make, and I'm hitting draws on the target line. You're hitting draws. And what's interesting about this, I'll let you in on a secret. When I did this with Bryson, uh, we had worked on it because he was having a hard time. His ball was staying right yeah. off the tee. And we had made a switch over to the ultralight grip in 2019 before Augusta. Mm -hmm. And he had success, and he won the US Open. But Bryson won the majority of his tournaments with 123 gram grip, playing yeah. around a C7 swing weight. Yeah. So since we've gone back to that, Bryson um, is driving the ball as good as he's ever driven it. Um, he went to a crank driver, which has bulge and roll on the face, which has helped as well. But by going to a heavier grip, it's allowed him to get the club out in front a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And he noticed when we did this same test that the ball was coming back. So by adding the weight and being able to stop the grip when you have these high club head speeds that you guys have. Well, 
A little different category, but okay. A little different. I mean, you're swinging at 125. That's well above tour average. So you're, you would be considered long even by PGA Tour standards. Right, but we're not chipping and putting. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, no. But we have something for you there. We can give you a lot of control around the greens <laughs> I'll have as to well. look into that for sure. Exactly. So where do you, you know, you've seen the numbers. Where do you take me now? I mean, do you, is that medium? Was that it? Or do we I do think we more? maxed out so far at the medium um, tour series. So what I'd like to do is give you a light medium grip. Let's see what happens. And we're going to take a look at the uh, start lines okay. at this point. Um, we're going to start looking at start lines. So um, if you're able to start the ball to the right and bring it back comfortably, like you would like with that draw, then we may go a little lighter if we can get the speed out of it. But right now you've maxed out at a tour series, 105 gram medium. All right, let's so, give it a shot. Let's see. So Zach, we've uh, gotten a lot accomplished so far. We've found that the medium uh, tour series, 105 gram grip was your optimum speed, optimum spin. You got that grip up to 188 ball speed. And um, oh, were you I think one, it was 186. Was it 186? 186, 186 and, yeah. 186 ball speed. Which and is still plus five. 129 club head I think speed? 128. 128. 128 yeah. All right, well, we're going to get you that 129 and 188 we talked about. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you the medium, same size grip, but we're going to try an ultralight. Okay. Uh, this is going to be in that 45 gram weight. Um, category. So uh, what I'm expecting is maybe a little more of the ball starting a little right. And I, okay. I'm curious to see and what uh, size did the you draw this pattern. Was? That is the same size as the medium tour series. Okay. That's the medium ultra. Light. So this is my grip, but lighter. Your grip, but 60 grams lighter. Okay. That was hit really good. So this, I didn't, didn't really go after it, but no. But I like the I like the flight. It didn't really move at all. No, slight draw, if anything. I did toe it a little bit. I'm sure that helped. Okay. Let's see if there's any speed here. We're at 180. Oh, so I got a little faster. 27. Yeah. Okay. So I just went from the world's heaviest grip to the world's lightest grip and the speed stayed about the, the same. speeds are similar. That's yeah. hilarious. Yep. Boy, you're hitting that well. Such a different experience though. And what are you sensing? It's just the way that I release it. I mean, this one, I, I have to sort of actively release it or the tour series, I could just sort of let it go. Interesting, okay. So you feel like almost you're catching up with your hands? Yeah, this one, I mean, I better square it up. Right. Where the tour series was almost doing Automatic. it for me. That's, that's a good observation. Because of the weight of the grip, it is. It's getting the club out front more, so you're not catching up with the extra yeah. lag. Because if I just made a swing here where I, you know, let's call it like game, you know, get it in the fairway, fairway finder, I, I bet it's not going to be as easy to hit straight. That's where it wants to... That's it wants to hang a little right. Yeah, when I take the speed off with this grip, that's where it wants to go. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to add the uh, weight back into the grip. And this is the way we do our fittings. Um, you know, typically we'll use the Torlock weights. Mm -hmm. So it's really efficient because we have a hole in the top of the grip and I can put any weight combo I want in here. I can so you go, can make an ultralight a tour series. I can make an ultralight a tour yeah. series. When we're doing our fittings, that really helps us streamline everything. So we can get you in and out of here typically in 15 to 20 minutes and get you into the perfect grip. Sure. And, and find that speed and dispersion that we found. So let's let's take a few swings with the weight back in the grip. Let's see if uh, it's still producing the same type of numbers. It's funny to see how, how much things fell off with that fairway finder there. Yep. Okay. So we'll go back to a, a normal one here. I mean, that just feels so easy. Oh, it's just crushed. That's got some skid on it, too. Yeah, it does. You had some nice low spin on that. Side spin, seven RPMs. There we go. I like those. I like that. 
126, 180, 124. Let me go back to long drive mode. Okay. Couple more here, but I feel like we found the grip that you, you're gonna optimize in the Tour Series medium. But it's hard to describe, you know, on camera, but the feeling where you don't have to think too much about squaring it up mm -hmm. is really cool. Yep. Is usually when I try to crunch it is when it goes right. Exactly. And that's, um, that's the beauty of the weight and the grip, and where it's getting the club, where you're delivering it from. Uh, club speed 130. Uh, yeah, that's your max club speed. Okay. So that kind of verifies what we thought, which is you're swinging the fastest this with the medium, and it's 105 grams. All right. So well, Let's get one in the middle, John. Let's end that high note if we can. Yeah. That might be tiring out a little bit, but we'll see. Wow. Ooh, Boy, that one was jacked. Got a chance. That one was jacked. Hit the line. Hit the line. On the line. Oh, oh man. Talk about got? maxing it out. All right. Good path. Good strike. Come on, baby. There it is. 185. A little slower. Should we try again? Let's do it one more time. 185. Your speed was down, but look at your ball speed. Well, I hit it more solid. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All, All right. right. That's a Ripper McGillicuddy. And I'm kind of finding, you know, I've never played this grip before, so I'm kind of figuring out, you know, like when to apply the speed. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a little different than what I'm used to. Yep. That was my full out long drive. A little bit left, which is crazy again. Yep. Well, let's see. Because the club is starting out. Starting to get a little short of breath over here. Are you? Take it easy, buddy. <laughs> Take it easy. Let me have that. Dangerous. There we go. 186. 186. 130. We're back. Optimum numbers. We're back. That's awesome. That was fun, John. Yeah, so you know, we started in that 122 swing speed range with the standard grip, and we ended at 130. So when I go play golf, you think this grip, all my clubs? 100%. OK. Yeah, you, what, you don't want to be changing the rotation of the face. Uh, you know, and It's going to impact your rotation. So whether it's your irons or woods, the timing of that rotation you want consistency with. Okay. along with the weighting of the, of the grip. So if it works in the driver, all the way through? It should work throughout the bag. It should work on any shaft combination. Uh, remember, the grip's the only thing that you're actually touching. It's your only connection to the club. Sure. So finding the right size and getting the optimum fit yeah. with where it sits in your hand and the surface contact is going to help you hit longer, straighter shots. And yeah. you can see that through our, our because fitting. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to go swing that hard on the golf course, but to be able to swing that hard and have some confidence, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about what this could bring to some of the other clubs. Well, again, the face isn't rotating open and closed as much, and it's doing it at a slower rate. Right. So you're really able to time that up with your bigger muscles with a free release. You don't have the tension that you normally would have. And the other question, we, how do your hands feel? You've hit a lot of balls. They feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cozy in those big grips. I think that's one of the bigger secrets that we have is it's really easy on the hands. So sure. uh, it's very senior friendly. Um, you know, as we age and our hands start losing some of the strength and pliability, um, a bigger grip really helps. You don't have to close your hand as much. And you're not taking that beating along your knuckles. It's more in your palm. Sure. So you really have a lot of shock absorption with bigger grips. Yeah. So lots of benefits. Most importantly, we want to see you play your best golf and enjoy the game. And uh, hopefully we're helping you do that. Thank you for that, John. Absolutely. This was so much fun. Zach, really my pleasure. It. Yeah, it's great seeing you.